Psalm 40 verse 4 says, Blessed, happy, prosperous is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Happy Father's Day. And this is for you too, ladies. Happy, blessed, prosperous is the woman who makes the Lord her trust. This is for all of us today. So let's move all of our trust over onto the Lord right now. Precious Heavenly Father, we trust in you on this special day. We put all of our trust in you, Lord. God, you are the father of all fathers. And God, we celebrate you. We're so thankful for your love and that you sent your son, Jesus. Now you have the Holy Spirit on assignment to breathe on your word and to give us revelation for the great blessings and treasures that you have for each one of us today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Happy Father's Day. Look, parents change the world. We talked about this on Mother's Day, parents change the world. But again, parents change the world, and I want to dial in on the Father's heart. This is good for all of us. Happy Father's Day. For some, this is a day to be thankful and celebrate their dad. For many, there is this patchwork of emotion and memories. Some good, some bad, maybe some very bad. The next few minutes are really for you, my friend. We're going to visit fatherhood with the ultimate source, God. God the Father, who is the genuine father of fatherhood. Don't forget, whenever God creates, he has an enemy that resorts to counterfeiting. Yes, even fatherhood. That's why Jesus called Satan the father of all lies. For every real diamond and ruby, some fraud will do their best to counterfeit it. But that just proves that the real thing is worth the faking. There is a real Father's heart. This is truly the Bible mystery that will transform and fulfill your life, the Father's heart. Oh, I know there's an extreme possibility that you've been hurt or offended by someone with the title Father, even the biological reference of Father. But God is an expert healer and restorer. Notice I didn't say replacer, very important. God's plan is to restore, redeem, and reform. Jesus said that knowing the truth will make you free, especially on this topic of the Father's heart. So get ready. God's about to answer some destiny questions that you've carried probably all your life. In this world, perception is reality. Seeing is believing, or at least what you see, hear, look at, listen to, and talk about, that becomes your reality, your truth, what you believe. Many people have not had a good father-child experience. For some, it's been disappointing or even okay, while others have been deeply wounded, profoundly injured, abused in their soul. But the one thing all of us have in common, good or bad, We've all got spiritual daddy issues that need God's truth to bring alignment, restoration, redemption. If you didn't need that, God the Father would have never sent his only begotten son Jesus to die on a cross and free you from the curse so that you could become his own child. Think of it. If your daddy was enough, then you wouldn't have needed God the Father and Jesus the Son. We all need God's help. I need help. You do. Oh, you thought Jesus came to earth just to save you from your sin? Well, surprise number one, Jesus Christ came to get you back to the Father God and an identity as a child of God. In John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way. Where do you think he was the way to? To the Father. We've got too many Christians believing Jesus is the way, but don't have a clue where he's taken them. Jesus didn't come just to save you from your sin, but to rewrite your heavenly DNA. That's right. Your DNA is a written code that some hacker hacked and now needs a rewrite. Who better than the author of all life? Jesus. He came to undo the hacking of your identity. We tend to look at humanity through a lens of uniforms and positions. So our perception is thin, shallow. We evaluate people based on their job title, their wealth, their position, social media page, likes and protests. We've confused doing with being. That's the world's limited perception. It's not Father God's though. When you have a compromised identity, you feel forced to substitute. So you choose to do so you can hope to someday be. The problem is someday never comes. 
Imagine a football player, a nurse, a policeman, a rapper, a model, a priest, an astronaut. What do they all have in common? A kind of uniform telling us what they do, but not who they truly are. God said in Psalm 139 verse 14 that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He also said in Ephesians 2.10 that you are His workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus unto good works which He has before ordained. DNA is communication, but all communication has an author. In our dysfunctional, worldly way, we pursue the destiny of becoming the only way we know how, manually. We do, we work, we build, outdo the other guy, win, pursue influence. It's part of our daddy issues. We know we need to be, but our carnal reflex is to do, hoping that we be. It's the whole, look at me, look at me, see, I'm somebody, I'm important, yes, I be, I be, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, you be. I like what I sense I can hear in God's quiet response to that panic grasp for significance. Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know, recognize, understand that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know, recognize. When you know Father God, something amazing happens on the inside of you. You finally begin to know yourself. You begin to understand your worth. He created you. He loves you. Your beliefs suddenly line up with the truth, not a random fact or theory, but an unchanging eternal reality that is immune to death or corruption. Look, you're always believing. The question is, what are you believing? Here is a master key principle to life. What you look at and listen to determines what you believe. What you believe masters all your choices and your choices are the sum of your life. So let's lay a little foundation to answer why the Father's heart even matters to you and I. In Hebrew language, just two letters make up the English word Father. The full interpretation that we get in the Hebrew language is leader, beginning of the house, strength of the lineage of the family. When you insert a third Hebrew letter in the middle of the word for father, you get a new word which has the meaning an open door to the father's heart, which in the English word we translate from the Hebrew as love. Love. The father's heart is the open door to love. The father's heart is the only true source of your being. H.G. Wells said this, until a man has found God, he begins at no beginning, he works to no end. Let's see what the author of all life says about that. Genesis 1, starting at verse 26. God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over all the earth and over everything on the earth. So God created man in his own image. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. There are approximately 200,000 different proteins making up the various structures in your body. As far as scientists know, every one of these proteins has a useful purpose. These proteins are produced from coded information in your DNA molecules. Think of it. They get their production and purpose from the communication in the strands of your DNA. The first thing God gave you was not your purpose, but your identity, your being. I've quoted it once, but I'm going to say it again. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, but it all starts with your identity. Builders work from a foundation. God started with your foundation, who you are, not what you can do. And that's part of the daddy issue thing, part of the human condition and why we so desperately need a savior. Only Jesus gets us back the legitimacy of our true being. That's why we all need to be born again, not thrown away, but made new by the DNA sacrifice of Christ on the cross. We've got a sin problem and we need help saving. 
No wonder we have so many mental health issues and depression and people in the news running from protest to protest while others chase conferences, theories, and escapes. There is no substitute for true identity, and you can't get there without truth with a capital T. And there is no other by which our identity can be saved but by Jesus. That's why you've got all these angry talk show hosts and pretend cultural representatives shaking their fists in the air, screaming. They've been hacked, people. They've been hacked. They desperately need Jesus. When you're without the truth of God's word, you're without true identity. For beings that need to be, that's like living without oxygen. Truth gives birth to identity. God's truth with a capital T. Number one, identity determines purpose. Number two, purpose triggers the provision. Number three, provision manifests glory. And number four, the glory of God is the essence of truth. If your complicated God design is not powered by the Father's heart, you're forced to fake it, be a counterfeit. Then you try to work the wheel backward to be. That produces angry, confused, upset people every time. They're always one more performance or accomplishment away from actually becoming and evolving into the ideal of whom they desire to be. But it never lands, does it? Perform to become? No. That's a fool's errand. Eve in the Garden of Eden heard the deceiver say, if you'll do this, you'll be this. When Adam lost his identity, he instantly became afraid. Only God's truth leads us and makes us who we truly are, giving us being. The author of life gives us rebirth into being. John 10 verse 3 says, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. See, not by purpose, but by name. Modifying the outer circumstance with activity will never change your inner reality. Dressing better won't make you better. Eating more won't make you more. Getting likes doesn't increase your real value. More net worth doesn't increase your worth. But your biology or your past doesn't define you either. If Jesus the King saves you, you are a royalty. If you're in the family of God under his name, even the angels and the devils know who you are and walk softly around you. You're a royal child of God. Your inner reality will always become your outer reality. Let me remind you again, the Father's heart is the only true source of your being. Jesus is the way. Where? Where is Jesus the way to? to the Father's heart, inside of the family of God, to being an heir of God. Look at Galatians 4, starting at verse 4. God sent His Son, born of a woman, born subject to the regulations of the law, to purchase the freedom of those who were subject to the law, that we might be adopted, oh, I like that, and have sonship conferred upon us and be recognized as God's sons, sons and daughters. And because you really are His sons and daughters, God has sent the Holy Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Verse 7, therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son and a daughter. And if a son and a daughter, then it follows that you are an heir by the aid of God through Christ. That's a lot of good news, people. Great news. But if you were paying attention, did you see that there are only two types of people on planet Earth? Slaves and the children. The not free and the free. The illegitimate and the legitimate. The I got nothing no matter how hard I work and the heirs of God. Now, what separates the two? It's all based on God's son and did you receive him? It doesn't matter who your earthly daddy is, how good or bad he was, how good or bad you are, or if your daddy helped you or hurt you. It's all dependent on the one way to be adopted and be recognized as a child of God. Jesus. It's all dependent on knowing him. He's the way where you know the answer by now to the father's heart. We were all born with this common sin disease. We got hacked identities. Interpretation, that means we were all born slaves of sin. No matter what your family background, a slave of sin means doomed to death. No true identity means no destiny. 
Romans 3 verse 23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No exceptions, not one. I was speaking at a men's conference and talking about this very subject. Afterwards, a young man came up to me a little bit proud of his dysphoria. You know, you can build a whole identity around what makes you broken. Anyway, he said, I was born this way. I don't think he expected my reply. And I said to him, me too. I was born broken too. That's why we all need Jesus. An identity rewrite. Too many people equate being born a certain way as therefore God made me this way. Don't believe that lie. God doesn't make broken. God heals broken. God forgives sins. God restores what's lost. When I was about four years old, my dad had me come out onto the porch. Earlier that day, I'd put on my little rubber work boots and I did what I thought was some worker man stuff and I kicked out this hole where the wood was especially rotten on the deck. Seeing the nice new hole that I'd made didn't make him all that happy. <laughs> he got right down to my level, eye to eye, and he said to me, he said, did you do this? And now remember, I'm four and I look at him with the most sincere face and I say, dad, I didn't do this. It must have been those big boys I saw walking around the house. He kind of hesitated and he, I could see his face change and then boom, he believed me. Here is this four-year-old kid managing to con an adult. Now, who taught me to lie so good? Who gave me a course on deception? Nobody. I came by it naturally. I was born in sin. Even as cute and adorable as I was, I was born in sin. I already had the sin thing working on the inside of me. But I've got good news for you today. Good news. Jesus, yes, Jesus came to save us from our sin and rebellion. But that's not all. He came to buy us out of slavery and illegitimacy and make us children of Almighty God. The problem is we have too many sons and daughters living like slaves. Sons and daughters of God living like slaves. They don't know the Father's heart. You cannot, cannot exceed the programming of your heart. No matter how hard you work, no matter how hard you try or discipline yourself, you can never get good results when your program has been hacked. When you have a virus on your hard drive, you can't get to your true identity without access to the author of truth. Remember, John 14 verse 6 says this, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is always going to the Father's heart. Now, here's a question. Is it possible to be God's child and yet not know the Father's heart? Yes, it is. Jesus told a story in Luke 15 of what is known as the prodigal son. Here's the basic story. A father has two sons. The youngest comes to him one day and asks for his half of the inheritance so that he can do whatever he wants with it. The father gives it to him and the kid takes off for other countries where he lives reckless and immoral. After he spends everything that he's got, he falls on hard times. The country even goes into a famine and he's starving. In desperation, he gets a job feeding some guys pigs. He's so hungry, he would have even eaten the pig food if he could have. But that gets him thinking. Wait a sec, he's thinking. My dad's employees eat better and live better than this. I'm going to go home, humble myself, tell my dad I'm not worthy to be called his son, but can I please have a J-O-B, a job, any job? Now, Jesus is telling this story, and he says that when the father saw his son still off in the distance, coming home, he ran to meet him. He hugged him. He kissed him. He put a robe on him, a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet. This kid was a mess. And the father immediately treated him like a royal son. In fact, the dad said, this is my son who was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he's found. And then they had this huge party just like God does when you come home to him. So let me point out three significant places in this father's heart story, okay? Number one, in verse 12, the son says, give me. 
He was trying to be somebody by having stuff, experiences, independence, do it my way living, feel good living. But it didn't work, did it? Number two, verse 17 says, and when he came to himself, so he's living with the pigs and he realizes I'm jacked up. He came to himself. And then verse two, verse 19, the son finds his prayer. Make me. He says, I'm going to tell my father, make me. You've got to be made. We need a savior who has the power to make us. Not so much a story of being restored to a position, but to the father's heart. The dad didn't say, this is my chauffeur, or this is my tractor guy, or this is my new manager. A true son, daughter comes to finally know who they truly are once they're in the father's heart. It was when I was in my early 20s, I was in the ministry, traveling, doing my best to honor the calling I believe God had put on my life. I was working, sacrificing, but feeling like I was losing ground, falling behind and not succeeding. Oh, we would do a concert or a conference and we would seem to have favor, open doors, but secretly I was so discouraged, hopeless and totally broken. It seemed like the more I gave, the further I fell behind. Yep. I was in the ministry talking about Jesus and totally discouraged, disheartened. (laughs) What a place to be. So what did my religious wired mindset decide to do? Oh yeah, I decided to sacrifice some more by fasting and praying. Now fasting and praying is a good thing and good results can come out of it if you aren't trying to substitute sacrifice for simple obedience. If you're not trying to earn God's favor instead of receiving it by his grace through faith. So it's day three of this fast and I'm super hungry and not feeling very spiritual. I was probably lusting after a slice of pizza or two at 10 in the morning. So frustrated, I prayed, God, don't you have a word for me? Something to tell me? Then I simply heard this in a quiet moment. Stephen, aren't you done yet? Well, that seemed to frustrate me even more. Am I done yet? What what kind of word from God is that? Am I done yet? But the more I thought about it, I realized what God was asking me. You see, paying my dues became my mantra for life. If God was going to bless me, I figured I needed to earn it. In that moment, I realized that God was saying, if you work perfectly, Stephen, for 700 years, you could never deserve all the blessings, the good things, that Jesus has already paid for you on the cross. That's why I sent my son, Jesus. Suddenly, suddenly everything I was already preaching made sense to me unintentionally. I was trying to compete with Jesus' perfect work on the cross. Can you believe that? How arrogant. I was daring to try to compete with Jesus' finished work instead of just receiving by faith his perfect work on the cross. My friend, if that's anything like you, if you're still trying to deserve God's blessing, access the Father's heart, stop. Put your faith totally in Jesus, in his finished work. He's already done the heavy lifting, the hard part. John 1 verse 12 says, to as many as received Jesus, to them gave he the power, the right, the privilege to become the children of God. That is to those who believe in, trust in, rely on his name, his identity. I had to learn that doing the right thing for the wrong reasons is still 100% wrong. If you don't fix the root, you'll always have bad fruit. You can't outrun bad programming. A document on your computer full of errors will only print out a document full of errors. Why do we suppose that shining up the external will make the internal whole, healed? It won't. You cannot outrun a broken identity, the reality of who you are in sin without Christ. Jesus makes the way for us to the Father's heart, the only source of true identity. And the Father's heart is a place of rest. Here's my question for you today. Are you tired? Weary of trying to become, to evolve into an identity? Gandhi once said this, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Then why would you ever need Jesus? If you can serve your way into an identity, 
then somehow you figured out a way to bypass God, the source of all life. It's foolish. Matthew 11, verse 28, Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. No amount of self-sacrifice or labor or penance or good works or Christian works will substitute for the name transfer and free gift of adoption in and through Jesus Christ. Receive Jesus right now. Just say, Lord, I need you right now. The hope of this fatherless generation is the Father's heart. Jesus is the only way to the Father's heart. I want to lead you in a very special prayer. I like to pray based on Ephesians 3, verse 14 to 20. You may even want to get on your knees and receive all that God has for you as his child. Praying Ephesians 3, verse 14 to 20. I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant me, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in my heart by faith, that I, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that I might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, unto God be glory forever. Amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together, we live life strong.